Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Welburn, and this is Faith Baptist Church Sunday School. And this time change weekend, we spring forward. So try to figure that out as far as your clocks and those sort of things. The good thing is most of us have clocks to automatically update. But if you're like myself, you still have several older vehicles that are required for you to manually update. And there's a few old clocks on the wall and a few microwaves and stoves and those sort of things. So anyway, I also have an old analog watch, so I have to manually update that. Springing forward is easier, though. You just wind it forward and it's, it's done. That's it. Also, more light at the end of the day. It tricks us into thinking we have more sunlight. We really, uh, we, we do a little bit because we're getting closer to the summer solstice. But anyway, spring forward. So we're looking at Genesis chapter 1. And creation, when we see things like that, especially looking outside, seeing sunlight, realizing how things change. And, you know, it's been like this since creation as far as time and, and how um, we gain all the way till summer solstice and then we lose until the winter solstice. And so, anyway, we're headed to the vernal equinox uh, in just a few days. I saw a billboard that said seven days till spring. So, but, you know, you think about what is our responsibility here. And we talked about, or I, I mentioned how Joseph helps out with some sticks and things in the yard before I mow so I don't sling any projectiles uh, with, when I hit sticks. But also, taking out the trash, that's, that's a big deal. And so... Um, he will help with the trash cans and empty them into one big trash can and then take them out to uh, take it out to the big can and replenish the bags that's that's the biggest step in taking out the trash is putting a bag back in the trash can after you've done all that so it's it's his duty and he's pretty good at seeing whenever things are full um of course like a typical guy and, and myself on the same way the, the trash can will be full and you will cram in as much as you can on top of it to see how far you can get it especially if you have a flat paper plate or something flat that you can just cram and push down with your hand and not get things all over it. But anyway, but we have responsibilities and duties, and so he does too. And, and uh, for us as people, as folks living on the world and the earth, we have responsibilities. And this is not a sermon about uh, being green or that sort of thing, but it is a sermon about responsibility and how we are uh, stewards of this earth. And so understanding that, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 if you look in Genesis 1, and, and many of you can recite this by memory, but um, this is the Holman version, so if you're remembering in your mind the King James, it might be a little bit different, but let's look at Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, we think about without void, again, if you're thinking King James English. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was an evening, and there was a morning one day. It's interesting to look back, and folks will say, Well, we don't know how long that day was. Uh, it could have been millions of years, and folks try to, try to weave in evolution into the creation story, but I, I do believe it was a 24-hour period. Why would God make that and then change it later? Um, but anyway, that's a, that's a whole separate point. What's interesting, Moses wrote the book of Genesis, and if you think about this, whenever God revealed through inspiration the Holy Spirit hadn't appeared yet, we talked about this last week, but whenever God revealed to, to Moses what those face-to-face uh, -face interactions that Moses had, he wrote this to the people that were wandering in the desert after they had left Egypt. So think about the audience, the context, the people that are reading this, that are understanding this. And so that's whenever Moses wrote this, Genesis chapter 1. And um, if you look back, um, what impacts you most of, of the first day? If you've been like me, we've had so many cloudy days in, in the winter. Anytime there's sunshine, it's just like, ah, oh, you know. And so that's the way it's been this week. The next week forecast is supposed to be kind of cloudy and rainy, but this week has been fantastic. And it's been interesting to see how people react differently whenever there's sunlight. And whenever in the evenings, there's going to be a little more light once you get off work to do things. And so it's interesting, the mood. Whenever um, you look at other creation accounts, John chapter 1 in my notes, um, Jesus, Jesus was with God. And that's what in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you have Jesus and God, and, and you have reference in the next verses about us, which goes along with what we studied last week about the Trinity. 
And so you have that creation, and, and you think about it. Um, at nighttime, whenever you go out, um, the God of the universe created the starlit sky and also the ground that you're walking on. The, um, there's all kinds of microbes, and, and if you're a, a fan of biology, um, so many things that are happening on the terrestrial level. So it's, it's interesting thinking about all that being created. And for some people, it's, it's hard to believe, but then you see a design, you see a pattern, and it would be so much of a challenge for that to evolve and to basically come out like it has now. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. Then God said, let us, and this is where you see God referring to the Trinity, let us make man in our image according to the likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of of God. He created them male and female. And we know the story of Adam and Eve. Um, and this is basically saying we are created in God's image. My dad was a pastor and he often talked about templates being basically in heaven, that God has templates. You think about the tree of life and uh, trees themselves and, and people. And there's more, more than likely a template in heaven of the things we see here. And obviously our template is God. We're created in the image of God. And it's interesting, whenever you look in the Old Testament, whenever Jesus, basically the, the angel of the Lord, visited Abraham, also in the book of Genesis, as a form of a man. And we truly believe this is a theophany. This is Jesus appearing before he appeared on earth in the form of a child, a baby. But basically this is in the Old Testament. And so whenever you had the angel of the Lord, basically was, was appearing in the form of a, of a man, of somebody that had arms and legs and features. So it's fascinating to see that. So it makes you think about God and um, the form of God, and so that gives us an idea. But um, and, and it's interesting, too, you think about images of God. Whenever you, the word image in the Hebrew typically is used for um, stone images or those sort of things, but basically it's a template is what God is saying in this passage. And you think about why is it significant that we are created in the image of God. And for us, it should be something that we see ourselves truly as somebody that is a steward over creation. In this passage, it talks about being ruler over the, uh, the fish and the birds and those sort of things. I see us as being stewards. If you've known anybody that's had a farm, you have to take care of animals, even though you do prepare them sometimes for food sources and those sort of things. But you have to... To take care of them. I had the opportunity to get a rooster this week for free, a leghorn, and I did not have a good place to get a rooster. I need a good coop. I need an enclosure. I saw where uh, one of uh, mom's friends has a whole enclosure over her hen area so that hawks and also foxes can't get to them. And so for animals and different things like that, we are required to be stewards. And seeing passages like this reminds us of our responsibility that we have. Um, as we look in further in Genesis chapter 1, verses 28 through 31, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Again, many people, let there be light. Be fruitful and multiply. You hear people joke about passages or things or say things, and you hear lost people, folks that have never grown up in church, say, Let there be light or be fruitful and multiply. It's from this passage, Genesis chapter 1. But anyway, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I've given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This will be food for you. The folks with diverticular disease right now are saying, oh, seeds. But anyway, but God gave us trees and creation for us to be stewards over, and us being created in the image of God elevates us over creation. And, and there's a lot of debate over that. Well, we're equal with different animals and those sort of things. And, and, but honestly, if you truly believe God's Word, the Bible, we are created as superior over the rest of creation. But that superiority gives us responsibility to be good stewards. For all the wildlife of the earth, if you look at verse 30, and every bird of the sky, for every creature that crawls on the earth, every thing having breath and life in it, I have given every green plant for food and it was so god saw that he had made and it was uh, what he had made and it was very good indeed 
evening came and then morning the sixth day. And you, you think about that. How would you re, how would you describe your responsibility right now as somebody here living on the earth? And there's been a lot of debate in politics about um, as far as energy sources and electric vehicles and those sort of things. And, and again, not going there in this Sunday school lesson, but truly looking at God's word and saying it just requires us to be a good steward. You shouldn't want to, hey, I'm going to go change the oil in my Mustang and I'm going to put it in this big white container and I'm going to take it out to the edge of the woods and just dump it in the yard. It's not a good thing to do. Uh, you know, there, there's recycling programs and so forth. and um, Or going down the road, it irritates me how much trash and debris you see on the sides of the road. I hate that and um, give a hoot, don't pollute. I think it was Woodsy the Owl whenever I was a kid that, that had that slogan. But you're, you go to cookout and, and you get a whatever, a Diet Pepsi in a cup, and you go down the road, you shouldn't just fling it out the window. It's, uh, again, God wants us to be good stewards, and we shouldn't trash the earth. We shouldn't just say, well, I'm over the earth. God said I'm created in his image. I can just do whatever. Just use common sense. Follow what God's word says. It really, I mean, it's just it's it's pretty simple, and you know how do these verses that we've looked at summarize our mission, and um, for us as humans, and and uh, thinking about creation and believing in creation, believing in God's pattern and design, intelligent design, but also further to our level to our responsibility. So we're going to have a little more daylight this week. We're going to be able to go outside and do things. I'm mechanical i like to work on things and cars and and those sort of and, and objects um how am i going to be responsible and um should you care should you think about your impact here on the earth yes again looking at scripture staying away from politics just looking at god's word so i want to share that with you genesis chapter one next week we're going to be looking at sin and the nature of sin especially as we're um, heading into the weeks prior to easter thanks everybody hope you have a great week ahead Enjoy the more sunlight. It's a little bit cloudy, but we'll have some warmer days ahead once we get past this upcoming week. All right, thanks.